1911, Colorado National Monument was established to preserve a spectacular example of erosion. Today, we see brightly colored layers of rock in the monument and north of the monument across the Grand Valley. When we look at Colorado National Monument today, it looks like it's been here forever. But if we could see back through time over the last 300 million years, Western Colorado has changed a lot. It has seen cycles of monsoons and drought. It has been covered with mountains, lakes, and swamps. At times, it's been 10,000 feet high, ocean beaches, or 2,000 feet underwater. It has been home to dinosaurs and now to us. All these changes have left their traces in the rocks that are exposed by erosion. Let's look at the stories the rocks have to tell us about how Colorado National Monument came to be the beautiful place we enjoy today. Let's focus on the area around Grand Junction and Colorado National Monument, shown in the white box. The area includes the Colorado River, high plateaus, and the Grand Valley, which looks green here because of farms and irrigation. The blue dot is the city of Grand Junction, where the Colorado and Gunnison Rivers join. The black outline shows Colorado National Monument, and the yellow dot is the visitor center. Today, this area is dry, with towering cliffs, bushes, and a few hardy trees. But it was different 300 million years ago, before the time of the dinosaurs. 300 million years ago, there was a shallow ocean covering the northern part of the area. At this time, the continents of North America and South America were slowly crashing into each other. The result from this collision formed new mountains called the Ancestral Uncompagre. As these mountains grew higher, they pushed the ocean farther north out of the area. These mountains may have reached 10,000 feet in elevation and were covered with some of the world's first evergreen forests. Millions of years later, the climate became drier until it turned into a desert. Vast quantities of sand blew in from the north, forming sand dunes. The sand at the bottom of these dunes turned into sandstone. About 250 million years ago, another shallow ocean flooded the northern part of the area. Rivers carried gravel, rocks, and boulders from the mountains into the sea, wearing the mountains away piece by piece. Exposing ancient metamorphic rocks formed 1.7 billion years ago during Precambrian time. Two hundred twenty million years ago, the area had been eroded flat and the climate was wet. Forests grew, providing food for early dinosaurs. Sediments carried by streams eventually hardened into the red rocks of the Chinle Formation that you see today below the cliffs at Colorado National Monument. The Chinle Formation rests directly upon ancient Precambrian rocks. This represents a 1.5 billion year gap in the geologic record. 200 million years ago, as the climate became arid, the area turned into a desert with 200 foot high sand dunes. Over time, these dunes turned into sandstone called the Wingate Formation that today forms the dramatic tan-colored cliffs seen throughout the monument. When rains started to fall again, small streams worked their way across the former desert. Over time, these streams deposited sand that eventually turned into a hard sandstone, the Cayenta Formation. This hard rock caps and protects the large cliffs at the monument from erosion. 165 million years ago, the area dried up again, and once more, sand dunes covered Colorado National Monument. These dunes hardened to form the Entrada Sandstone, which can be seen behind the visitor center. When the rains came again, the sand dunes disappeared. Streams, floodplains, and shallow lakes dominated the landscape, creating habitat for many types of dinosaurs. The streams and lakes deposited sediments that became the rocks that make up part of the Morrison Formation, famous for its dinosaur fossils. Most of the Morrison Formation and the adjacent Wanaka Formation rocks found at Colorado National Monument are covered by bushes and trees. 
However, when not covered, these rocks stand out because of their vivid stripes of pink, green, purple, and orange. By 110 million years ago, the early dinosaurs had mostly all died, and others took their place. Colorado National Monument had weather like Northern California, mild and wet. The first flowers appeared and tall forests covered the area. Around 100 million years ago, an ocean slowly flooded the area. Its beaches were preserved as a sandstone layer called the Dakota Formation. The ocean kept rising for 10 million years, until 2,000 feet of water covered the region. As sediment and the remains of creatures fell out of the water, a clay layer formed on the bottom of the ocean. Over time, this layer grew to be over 4,000 feet thick and turned into a rock called the Mancos Shale. About 75 million years ago, the ocean started to retreat. Soon, Colorado National Monument was above the water again at the edge of a beach. The beaches left sandstone behind, which once covered all of the area, but now can only be found across the Grand Valley at the Book Cliffs. Around 65 million years ago, two important things happened. The dinosaurs all died out, and the current Rocky Mountains started to form. Locally, the uplift of the Rocky Mountains caused the southern part of the area, including Colorado National Monument, to rise, while the northern part slowly sank. Rivers ran north from the mountains and deposited thick sands. By 55 million years ago, the climate had become wetter, and a large lake formed across northwestern Colorado, eastern Utah, and southwestern Wyoming. At its largest, this lake was the size of the state of Mississippi. The beaches of the lake changed position many times as the lake got bigger and smaller. By 35 million years ago, the landscape was eroded essentially flat. Around 10 million years ago, the Rocky Mountains grew higher and higher. As rains fell, new rivers flowed west out of the mountains, including the Colorado and Gunnison rivers. Changing courses over millions of years, these rivers cut through thousands of feet of rock. About 2.5 million years ago, the Colorado River settled into its current path, and the Gunnison River joined it near Grand Junction. About 2 million years ago, the area started to resemble what it looks like today. During this time, smaller streams that flowed into the Colorado River began to cut the dramatic canyons seen at Colorado National Monument. During this time, climate fluctuated greatly, even producing glaciers in nearby mountains. Only within the last 10,000 years did the climate become what it is today. Every part of our Earth has its own unique geologic history. Here, the geologic story has given us a place of spectacular scenic beauty that many thousands enjoy each year. But it also serves as a window into the Earth where we can see and learn how our landscape changes. The monument, like everywhere on our planet, is not static, and the geologic processes that created it continue to shape it today. Most of us visit the monument to enjoy the beauty of the sheer cliffs and red rocks. But we have seen that the rocks have many stories to tell. Stories of past geologic ages, of dinosaurs, of ancient rivers and seas, and of how this beauty came to be. All of these stories help us understand our home, planet Earth.